Thank you for tuning in to Inside Taiwan. I'm Melvin Tan. President Ma Ying-jeou is set to embark on another home stay visit, this time to the Weixing neighborhood of Miaoli City. In order to welcome his esteemed guest, neighborhood magistrate Tang Jingtai not only tidied up his home, but also prepared handmade daikon Hakka noodles so that the president could sample and snack on authentic Hakka cuisine during his stay. The residents of Miaoli prepared an enthusiastic welcome for President Ma Ying-jeou. Honored that he had chosen their city for his latest homestay visit. The president was to stay at the home of Weixing neighborhood magistrate Tang Jingtai. The magistrate not only tidied up his house in anticipation of the visit, but also prepared handmade Hakka daikin noodles, which would be offered to the president to sample. Tang also expressed his joy that the president was going to be staying at his house. However, as a farmer himself, he knows how difficult the lives of farmers are. And so he also said he would use this opportunity to speak with the president about this year's unstable vegetable prices. Tang said he hoped Ma would be able to help out the farmers. In addition to the Hakka daikin noodles, Tang also said that the next day's breakfast would be a simple home-style meal typical of the area. The magistrate also expressed his intent to invite Ma to tour his collection of Hakka cultural relics in an effort to make this homestay visit an unforgettable one for the president. For Guangshan Monastery, founder Master Xin Yun has suffered a second stroke and is currently being treated at Kaohsiung's Chang'an Memorial Hospital. And according to hospital officials, Xin Yun is in stable condition. Meanwhile, spokesperson for For Guangshan said that Xin Yun has been under stress in recent weeks due to the opening of the Buddha Memorial Center. Despite suffering a stroke last October, Fu Guangshan founder Master Xing Yun was able to attend the ribbon-cutting ceremony of the new Buddha Memorial Center in a wheelchair. On the evening of the 26th, however, Xing Yun began experiencing numbness in his left arm and was rushed to the hospital. Doctors determined that he had suffered a second stroke, but his condition was stabilized after undergoing treatment. Xing Yun has long suffered from high blood pressure, high blood blood sugar, high blood lipids, and ischemic heart disease. According to Fu Guangshan officials, Xing Yun has been under a great deal of stress in recent weeks due to opening activities for the center. Xing Yun first began planning the center 10 years ago and suffered a stroke on the day after it opened. However, he has released statements of gratitude to his followers for their concern through the hospital and Fu Guangshan. The opening of the Buddha Memorial Center of the Fu Guangshan Monastery is a highly anticipated event among Buddhists. President Wang Yingzhou visited the center before the DPP presidential candidate Tsai Ing-wen attended the establishment ceremony of the pagoda. And during a speech, Tsai prayed for the stroke-stricken Master Xing Yun. Reporters noticed that First Lady Christine Chow was one of the VIP guests applauding after Tsai's speech. Even though it was a surprise to see them on the same stage, the two did not have any interactions. Taking a ferry to tour around the Kaohsiung Harbor, DPP presidential candidate Tsai Ing-wen was accompanied by the city mayor Chen Ji and listened carefully to a briefing about the harbor. Tsai identified Chen's plan to build a pop music center in the harbor area and monorail along the shore and promised to transform Kaohsiung Harbor into a new Bay Area in Asia if elected. Tsai seemed especially happy to canvass for votes in Kaohsiung, which is known as a stronghold for the opposition party. At 11 o'clock, she went to the Fu Guangshan Monastery to attend the event to celebrate the establishment of the Buddha Memorial Center. First Lady Christine Zhou had been sitting on the stage since 9.40 in the morning and applauded along with other guests to welcome Tsai's arrival. However, they did not have any interactions. During the speech, Tsai only greeted religious representatives and avoided all the politicians. After the ceremony, Zhou visited the memorial center and Tsai canceled her lunch plan at the monastery and left earlier than the intended schedule. First Lady Christine Chow has been making more public appearances lately. She and President Ma ying Zhou have embarked on separate itineraries to double their star power. On December 27th, Zhao headed to Kaohsiung and Pingdong to partake in the religious ceremony and also to tell stories to young children at a school. The First Lady was greeted warmly wherever she went, with people clamoring to shake her hand or pose for a picture. 
And meanwhile, the president attended the Ministry of National Defense Military Personnel Promotion Ceremony. During the event, he stressed that Taiwan cannot enter into an arms race with China, nor does it have a need to. Thus, the focus in the future should be to persuade China's leaders that there is no need to use military force to resolve across strait issues. President Ma ying presided over a promotion ceremony for senior military personnel. One by one, he congratulated and shook hands with the 30 newly promoted major generals or generals. During his speech, the president said that although peace is the best situation for cross-street ties, the nation's military still needs to be prepared for war and self-defense. Since Ma has taken office, cross-street relations have improved greatly, helping to institutionalize bilateral relations. This in turn has built up an effective defensive line for Taiwan to ensure the island's security. While the president was taking care of official business, the first lady was busy reaching out to voters. Christine Chow traveled to Xingpi Township in Pingdong, where she read stories to elementary school students. There was even time for a question and answer session after the storytelling, and all the children were bursting with questions for Chow. During her visit, Chow kept her usual low profile, but once word came out that the first lady was in the township, many townspeople started gathering outside the school hoping to get the opportunity to take a photo with her. Chao also paid a visit to a nearby monastery, partaking in a Buddhist ceremony, where she interacted with supporters, bowing to the adults and patting the children on their heads. The crowd responded to her actions, calling out encouragement, showing that her low-key, sincere and simple approach appeals to voters and will help Ma gain many votes. Speaking of campaign products, the BN hat used in the former President Chen Shui-bian's campaign back in the year 2000 created much buzz. Ever since, novelty products have become indispensable in campaigns to grab attention and generate interest. This time, the three presidential candidates have their own unique campaign products. Products for President Ma ying joseph feature the patron of national flag. For Tsai Ing-wen, the most popular items on the product line must be the three colorful piggy banks. Former governor of the province of Taiwan, James Song, has come up with a palm-shaped toy that sounds exactly the same way as Song's previous posts. The latest product of Ma ying joes campaign headquarters is a national flag-inspired tape-measured watch. Other popular items include photos, t-shirt, hat, cup, emulate, mineral water, and a national flag book bag. But the campaign headquarters of Tsai Ing-wen also came up with a variety of products, such as a campaign song CD, shopping bag, polo shirt, hat, raincoat, lapel pin, and of course, the most popular and thus creating three piggy banks. In James Song's campaign, operatives played with the homonyms and launched a product called Song's Secret Palm, which pronounced the same as the presidential candidate's former most known post. These campaign products that incorporate the elements of the candidates are trying to create a bond with supporters and bring a fun side to the issue of politics. With the election only a few weeks away now, merchandise designed with the national flag offered by the KMT is selling well in Miaoli County. No co content to let the KMT get all the attention. Several Pangreen supporters in Tou Township have dusted off their sewing machines to produce all types of apparel and accessories from fabrics printed with tone blossoms to try and get a share of the market. The KMT has produced many types of campaign merchandise, all of which feature the national flag. Not only are these products useful, but they are also aesthetically pleasing. In response, Penguin supporters have brought out their sewing machines and are using tongue blossom printed fabrics to make scarves, bags and other apparel and accessories, hoping to change the situation of the election. Their focus is on the tongue blossom, which is synonymous with the Hakka culture. They are facing serious competition as the KMT has a glittering array of products, from limited edition helmets to bags and reusable mugs, and there is high demand for all of it. The funds raised from selling these products will go towards the campaign coffers of the presidential candidates. Over a decade ago, numerous vocational schools were established as part of the new educational reform program. Junior high schools were also encouraged to establish affiliated high schools. 
Taiwan now has 190 secondary schools, but the National Teachers Association says that many of these schools are lacking in personnel and are restricted by space limitations. The NTA is therefore calling on the Ministry of Education to resolve these issues while promulgating the 12-year compulsory education program. In recent years, many junior high schools around Taiwan established high schools to create complete secondary schools. In some cases, students were able to enter high school without taking the basic competence test for junior high school students. However, the National Teachers Association says that many of Taiwan's 190 secondary schools lack personnel and educational resources. While junior high schools began establishing high schools in 1995 as part of a national educational reform program, relevant laws were not amended until 2000. In recent years, secondary schools have begun exploring the possibility of separating junior high and high schools. Taoyuan's Nankan Junior High School, for example, officially separated its schools earlier this year. With the new 12-year compulsory education program set to be launched in 2014, the NTA is calling on the government to reassess secondary school issues and says that cost cuts cutting cannot be the Ministry of Education's top priority. In response, the MOE says that the new program will reposition secondary schools.